welcome back. Creek and ocean water quality have long been a challenge in urban areas, but the Upper Las Positas Creek Restoration Project found creative ways to improve the Royal Borough Creek watershed. Inside Santa Barbara takes you through the project from beginning to end. Hundreds of years ago, Santa Barbara's geography looked relatively similar to today. There was the same mountain range with creeks bringing water from the top to the ocean just a few miles below. Although our mountains and ocean are still in their original locations, Santa Barbara's creeks have drastically changed. Over time, they were filled with concrete and asphalt and narrowed to allow for the development of the city and flood control. Why is that a problem? Because soil and plants act as natural filtration systems. Not only do residents and visitors recreate in creek areas, they also go in the ocean. And if you want a clean ocean, you can't begin at the beach because the health of our ocean begins at home. The number one water pollution source at the beaches in Santa Barbara is urban runoff. And it starts up here at the top of the watershed in the urban areas. And when we have rain events or we have people uh, washing their cars in their driveway or overspray from irrigation, that water runs over the surface of the urban area through the streets. It picks up oil, uh, grease, uh, it picks up metals, and bacteria, and those w find their way down to the ocean through the storm drain system and the creeks, and that water is untreated. Everyone in the city is partly responsible for that pollution source. Everyone in the city is part of the solution for that. So we want to stop the, the pollution in the first place, but to the extent we still have uh, water running off the roads and so forth, bringing pollution into the storm drains and into the creeks, we want to be able to, to treat that and, and make sure that the water is clean by the time it reaches the beach. That's where the Upper Las Positas Creek Restoration and Storm Water Management Project comes in. The purpose of the 13-month-long project is to not only create healthier habitat upstream, but also to improve the water quality downstream. By detaining and treating stormwater and incidental runoff at the Santa Barbara Golf Club, water quality downstream in Las Positas Creek, the Arroyo Borough Estuary, and Arroyo Borough Beach is improved. The municipal golf course is actually the headwaters for Las Positas Creek, which is one of the largest tributaries to Arroyo Borough. And what we've done is to do a creek restoration project here and also the stormwater pollution uh, treatment. And what that, uh, what that allows us to do is work our way down the watershed and continue with creek restoration efforts through that wa throughout that watershed, which will not only have important wildlife habitat benefits, but will improve water quality downstream. To fully understand the role the upstream area plays in water quality at the ocean, you can start at the source, rainstorms. Water that comes from rain events, known as stormwater, that does not soak into the ground becomes surface runoff, which in Santa Barbara flows through the storm drain system until it reaches the creeks and then the ocean. As it does this, the stormwater gathers and transports pollutants such as oil and grease, chemicals, nutrients, metals, and bacteria. And since stormwater is not treated, everything picked up along its path will be deposited directly through our creeks and into the Pacific Ocean. The best way to prevent this process is to slow that runoff down. Part of the, the problems that were um, experienced here at the site was really rapid storm runoff from the Samarkan neighborhood, um, from Adams School, from on the golf course and the parking lot here. And when that stormwater is moving really quickly, it picks up a lot of sediment, which is a, a water pollutant, and attached to a lot of that sediment is oftentimes bacteria, which can be bad. Um, but we also had a lot of erosion along the eastern portion of the course, right below the Adams School, and so a lot of the grading that we did, uh, earth moving and so forth, was really directed towards both slowing down a lot of that water and creating these pools and basins where water would collect and either infiltrate into the ground, so just slowly seep into the ground, or it was designed to not have these really steep erosive banks, and so basically laying those banks back and, and planting them with native plants to create habitat. The city used a combination of berms and basins, 
along with creating bioswells and grading the creek for erosion prevention to create a creek habitat more conducive to slowing the water. Detention is important because stormwater is treated primarily by the settling of suspended particles and the associated pollutants, including microorganisms. Settling of the particles can only occur when the water moves slow enough. Research conducted at UCSB has found that up to 90% of the suspended load and associated pollutants can be removed during detention. So this is a, a berm which creates the basin and this is actually called a retention basin because it retains water for longer periods of time. Um, in other parts of the project we've constructed detention basins which are just a temporary storage on the order of a couple hours to a day at max. Um, but this will hold water through the summer and so this way we can create a lot more habitat for migratory birds as well as habitat for native wild plants. In addition to the retention basins, the project added features that help treat runoff from smaller storms as well. Two types of bioswells were created to slow down the flow of water so that the solids from the runoff have time to settle and filter. In the areas that see higher flows, the bioswells include rock aeration, gravel filtration, and emergent plants, providing increased opportunity for removal of materials. These bioswells remove up to 80% of suspended pollutants, adding to the increased quality of water that ends up downstream and then eventually in the ocean. If we can stop the water long enough to let that sediment settle out, that will help clean the water. Well, microbes in the soil will break down most of those contaminants. Plants planted around these basins will uptake a lot of the nutrients that can cause algae blooms and other problems downstream. But it's not only water quality that is improved by this project. Flood control and wildlife habitat were also significantly enhanced. Right now um, in the world of stormwater management, it's really exciting because we've got solutions that can address multiple problems such as flooding and water quality issues. Before, a lot of the stormwater management issues were more directed at reducing flood waters. And so those, although they were really effective at getting rid of flood water, a lot of other problems have cropped up such as water quality. Um, it seems like the more concrete flood control channels that were put in the worse water quality got over time. And so now we're at a point where we're trying to find solutions to not create another problem in our creeks, but also to be able to solve multiple issues at the same time. And this is kind of a good example where we're reducing floodwaters downstream, but also creating a great wildlife habitat and increasing water quality, making it better on site here. This project was designed to be a, to serve multiple objectives. and. Uh, two of the important objectives, of course, are water quality and creek restoration. Those are the primary objectives for uh, Measure B and for the city's creeks division. This project also presented an opportunity to provide some flood protection for uh, residents downstream of the golf course who, when we have large storm events in Santa Barbara, in the past have been flooded out of their homes and businesses. And uh, through this project, we're able to control those peak flows of floodwaters so that uh, we, can, we can reduce the peak or shave the tops of those peaks off and hopefully prevent flooding downstream. And uh, through this project, we're, we're able to hold approximately 4 million gallons of stormwater and, and uh, we can release that at a different time when the, after the heavy part of the rain is over. The benefits of the project don't end with water quality and habitat restoration. Students at Adams Elementary School, located adjacent to the municipal golf course at Las Positas Road, received new habitat along with a big learning experience. What kind of plant? Before the Upper Las Positas Creek Restoration Project, the area that ran between Adams Elementary and the Santa Barbara Golf Course was filled with asphalt and concrete. The asphalt ditch allowed for water to flow quickly off the school's campus. However, that also led to erosion downstream as the water flowed through the golf course property. This, compounded with the loss of habitat and water quality, made the section of creek at Adams Elementary School an ideal spot to make changes. 
with the asphalt, it's there's no biology happening. There's no native plants there that are taking up nutrients and taking it out of the water. There's no wildlife habitat there. And so we lost a lot of those functions. And so getting that asphalt ditch and replacing it with native plants and allowing soil to be there really helps water quality and habitat. Working with school staff, the city created a more natural environment that reduces damaging erosion and improves creek water on the golf course. The city also created a more natural wetland that will be the focus of educational outreach efforts for years to come. This is their favorite time of the day. They love to have that hands-on experience. It's just it's important to see, I think, how science is related to real life experiences. Now, water that enters the bioswell from the storm drain on Las Positas Road will slowly pass through the newly restored creek channel as it heads downstream and enters elements of the larger stormwater management system on the city's golf course. This has resulted in significant expansion and enhancement of wetlands benefiting wildlife, water quality, and the community. We wanted to, to make it an outdoor learning classroom. And the bigger vision was combining the garden with the bioswell so the students could actually have that hands-on science and learning happening on a weekly and, and, and daily basis. Water that we're talking about is rainwater. The students were involved from the early stages of the project, participating in before and after visits. The school and creek staff used the bioswell as an opportunity for local youth to learn about restoration and the importance of healthy creeks. There was a lot of opportunity at the beginning of this project to really branch out not only to the golfers but also the neighbors. And with the Adams School, there was a great opportunity to really engage the kids in real hands-on activities. And so we designed a small habitat garden at the school, had the kids help us plant it, as well as right now we're working on a permanent signage program. And so we'll get their input and really try to tie it into their science curriculum so that it's an overall win for the school and, and win for the city. Well, we really wanted them to have ownership and feel like it's their bioswell and their garden. And that's why it was important for our students actually to be a part of the process. When the time came to plant the area, students joined Creeks Division staff for several work days where they installed hundreds of native wetland plants. This hands-on experience has only continued as the bioswell and recently added school garden have become part of the school's curriculum. We're able to meet state standards and national standards in a hands-on way with the bioswell. The city has been extremely, extremely helpful in creating that science curriculum and the city actually um, purchased hoses and um, gardening supplies and um, pretty much gave us a budget to be able to have some science equipment for every student that does work in the bioswell in the garden. In our after school program, they also use um, the bioswell as far as working with hands on experiments as well. So it's not just for the classroom, but it's for the after school program as well. So everybody benefits. All of the project changes focus on improving the water quality of Las Positas Creek. Yet city staff had another element to consider. The fact that nearly all of the project is right next to the city's municipal golf course. Because of this, the final product had to maintain the playability and aesthetic standards at the Santa Barbara Golf Club. Playability was, was one of our uh, primary considerations in designing this project. So now what we have on the course are some new water features. The response from the, the golfing community has been fabulous. They're very impressed with the uh, aesthetic beauty of the course and they're challenged by the, by the new water hazards on the course. By putting in natural landscaping elements and native habitats surrounding the water basins, the Creeks Division was able to enhance the golf club's atmosphere. Beyond these enhancements, the Creeks project was the perfect opportunity to make other needed changes at the golf club by combining the Upper Las Positas Creek Restoration Project with the golf club's safety improvement plan. Part of the construction project was we wanted to add more cart paths to the golf course because golfers were unable to play the course after significant rain events and we used a lot of the soil from the project to uh, 
um, add mounting to protect golfers around the new greens. So do you think the two work well together? I think they work great. Otherwise, it would have been under construction for maybe a year and a half, two years, and we condensed it to a little over a year. Besides the benefits to the course that would eventually be seen, Creeks and Golf Club staff also reached out to the golf community through committee meetings and interaction with players. Yeah, we did a lot of outreach, community outreach. We had um, a lot of public service announcements about it. Um, it was in the paper. And then we also did a open forum up at the golf course, where up at the golf shop, sorry, where we had uh, one day a week where um, the Creeks Department would be on hand at a table to answer questions and uh, give feedback on, to the public about how the project was going. So that was a big help. We also That outreach, along with education on the benefits to both the course and community, contributed to the player's eventual acceptance of the project. Because in the end, the city got cleaner water, animals now have more native habitat, and golfers have a more challenging and scenic course to play on. As a professional and as a golfer, I think it adds to the uh, overall aesthetic quality of the golf course. Not only that does it you know, clean the water that runs into a borough estuary, it also you know, makes it more challenging for the golfer. And as the golf course superintendent, I'm more you know, proud to be out here and call this my home club. The Upper Las Positas Creek Restoration Project serves as an example of the ways creative problem solving can lead to a multitude of benefits. By setting out to improve water quality downstream in Las Positas Creek and thus in our ocean, the city was able to enhance flood protection, native habitat for wildlife, and children's education, not to mention making the Santa Barbara Golf Club a more attractive and challenging course to play. In the end, these changes will help the city of Santa Barbara come out ahead financially as well. This is a, a, a natural way to treat the water. Uh, that's what happens in a, in a natural system and in, in the environment. And uh, it doesn't require any kind of energy use or any kind of uh, fil filters that need to be purchased and, and replaced and maintained. And so uh, our long-term maintenance costs will also be decreased by using this type of system. This past winter, with its higher than average rainfall, was the perfect opportunity to test the new system. I think this was the second wettest December on record, and the project performed perfectly. Um, it was really great to see the, all the basins are full, and we've got about 3.6 million gallons of stormwater held on site. So it's a, really a phenomenal success. For more information on the Upper Las Positas Creek Restoration Project, you can visit santabarbaraca.gov forward slash creek.